Crafters. Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me today for another Inspiration Friday project. So I had so much fun when I made my resin trays that I wanted to take it a step further and I thought it would be really fun to try the resin on a cheese board. And so what we're going to work on today is making these cute cheese boards. So um, this is one that I made last week, and it has got an epoxy resin finish on it, which I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to do. But I just think they're great. These will make perfect um, birthday presents, you know, shower gifts, wedding gifts. Um, so I really hope you guys like this project. It was a lot of fun to put together. And hey, if you're new to my channel and you're this is the first time you're stopping by, thanks so much for stopping in. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and click on the bell and YouTube will alert you each time I upload a new video. So I'm going to go ahead and get my camera angle changed and we are going to get making these cute resin cheese boards. Okay, to start with this project, let's look at the supplies we're going to need. So I've got them all laid out here for us. So we're going to start out with a cheese board. And I picked this cheese board up at a local um, craft store. But you, if you've got a husband that's crafty, he could definitely cut you something, no doubt about it. So this one happens to have some feet on it already, which is really nice. So I've got my cheese board is the main thing that you need to have. Then I've got my um, amazing clear cast resin and I've got part A and part B. Now I've already measured those out and we'll go through the steps of um, actually mixing resin in just a second. Then I went through and I picked out the colors that I want to have um, on my cheese board. So I'm using a aqua I'm using a sterling silver, I've got a geranium red, I've got black, and then I've got white. So just basic colors is what I'm picking out to use. And I'm going to show you how we're going to mix those with the resin to get that beautiful finish on the cheese board. And then for every color that I've picked out here, I want to make sure I've got an individual cup because we're going to mix some of that paint with the resin. And then I need a mixing cup because I'm going to take combine part A and part B and we're going to put it into this cup to mix it. And then I like to have popsicle sticks. Those are really great stirs. Um, I want to have one for each of my different colors, one for the clearer resin, and then I like to have one because I like to play around in the colors. So just grab a couple of those. You are also going to want to have some painter's tape, and I'm really low on painter's tape, so I just grabbed what I had on hand. And then, of course, anytime you're working with resin, you want some um, gloves. So make sure you've got some plastic gloves. And then one other item that I have over here is my heat gun, and I'll show you how we're going to use the heat gun um, when we get ready to um, move some of the paint around. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my resin mixed. Um, up. So we're going to go ahead and mix that. So I'm going to put my gloves on. And remember that whenever you're working with resin, part A and part B have to be the exact same measurement. So I'll link down all the supplies I've used here down below. But these are um, medicine dispenser cups. And so I've just literally filled that to the last line on here. It's right about two tablespoons. I know this cup in particular that I'm using is measuring in, um, in milliliters. So, um, but it's right about um, two tablespoons. But just make sure you have the exact same amount with part A and with part B. Okay, so I'm going to put both my parts in there. And then what you want to do with your um, epoxy, once you have A and B in, and this is the part that takes a little bit of time, not too long, but you want to slowly mix them together. Now, a good two-minute stirring is what you're going to want to do. And so I'm going to actually um, fast forward through this so you guys don't have to sit and wait for me to stir for two minutes, but I just want you guys to 
make sure that you stir it and I'm going to show you what it looks like once I have it all together. It's a little milky right now. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but what you want is it to be a little bit clearer and then you don't want the bubbles in there. So that's what we're really working towards. So I'm just going to glance at my clock to see that I get my two minutes in. So we're just going to stir for two minutes here. Like I say, you guys, I'm going to fast forward through this part. Okay, so I've hit my two minutes. And so what I'm going to do now is before I start mixing the epoxy, I'm going to prep my board really quick. Now, this board happens to be um, totally unfinished. Okay, so normally what I would do is if there was a little bit of finish on it is I would rub a little bit of sandpaper over the top of it. But in this case, I don't need to worry about that. So what we want to do is one, I am going to remove this um, rope. We can add that later. We don't want that to be in the way. So I'm just going to put that off to the side. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to tape off the back side. Um, I'm wishing I had bigger painter's tape, but I don't have the wide stuff. So what we want to do is you want to tape off the back because what's going to happen is your epoxy is actually going to drip and you don't want it on the back. And so we're just going to go ahead and tape off all of our board. And I'm not necessarily worried about the middle part here. Um, and the reason why I'm only doing the top part is I'm only going to put epoxy on the top. Um, because you won't want to be cutting with sharp knives on top of your um, epoxy. Um, having a display and having it just, it's kind of more of an accent point is what we're actually looking for um, with um, this epoxy that we're doing. So just going to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my scissors, or actually I'm going to grab my X-Acto knife, and we're going to um, cut off all of that extra um, that's hanging over the sides. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want the epoxy um, to go down the side so it looks like it's a nice finished look. Okay, so, so as you guys can see, oops, on my paper, this is what I've got right now. So let me grab my knife. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn my board over and I I'm going to either use my knife or my scissors, and I want to trim away all of this excess. So let's see if we can get the knife to work right. So if I just... And then just kind of curve it under. Just don't want any of that showing. See if my scissors work a little bit better. Oh, much better. Okay. And I probably could have been a little bit more precise as I was putting the tape on, but it just. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to judge where my tape is on the top. So what I'm going to do, just so I know where I'm taped at on the, see how I'm taped on the back? I'm just going to come around and just so I know when I go to pour, I really don't want to pour past that. And you guys will understand once we actually do the pour here.
basically, you guys see how I have that, okay? So now I know when I get ready to pour, I don't want to go past that line, so we're going to decorate this part up here, okay? So let's set that off to the side just for a second, and let's get our colors poured. Now, the trick to a mixing paint with epoxy is go very sparingly. You can always add more color, okay? But you can't take it away once you've already got it, okay? So I've got five colors, I've got five cups. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a little bit of epoxy in each one. Okay, so I got a little bit of epoxy and I've got a little bit left in case I need to add to any. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a drop in each one. I always get worried that more is going to go in. See, that's all I need is a little drop. And then I'm going to mix that up. Okay, and your black is all ready. One of the reasons why I really like using the amazing um, clear cast is I use it on my tumblers when I do tumblers also, and it's food safe. And so um, what, that's one thing you always want to think about when you are um, doing anything that's going to be around food is making sure um, making sure that your epoxy is food safe. There are quite a few people that like to use um, the marine grade epoxy. And the only issue that I find with that is it's not FDA approved. So um, I do recommend, again, I'll put the links to the amazing um, ClearCast that I like to use down below, but just um, think about what you're making and think about what the use is. And if food is going to be involved, I would strongly encourage you um, to use an FDA. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so you see I just am barely putting any in. Um, any in. If you put too much in, um, and you guys will know if you get too much in, because your epoxy will get really stringy. And um, we definitely don't want that to happen. I have to add a little bit more epoxy to this one. Don't have too much in my teal, unless I just want that as a highlight color. Okay, so I've got my colors all mixed. I'm gonna move my paint out of the way here. And I'm gonna bring my board in. Now, I still have my gloves on. Always using gloves when I'm working with epoxy, okay? And I'm going to bring this in, and I'm going to pour a little bit of just regular epoxy on, okay? And I am just going to use my popsicle stick. Kind of just get move that around. And one of the reasons why I like to put this first coat on is it just helps all the other color um, just really flow. So we'll just get a good layer right over there. Okay. And then let's take our first color. What are we going to start with? Let's start with black at the bottom. I got a little bit out of camera. Sorry, you guys. Okay, and I am literally just going to take my cup and I'm just going to pour a wavy line. And you can see it's already starting to move. Okay, and I think I'll do a little bit of red. Ah, let's go with the silver next. And this is where your guys' imagination can go. And let's try a little bit of red in there. Now, if you have a, um, a cheese board that doesn't have legs on it, I have picked up these little guys, and um, these work out great. I put underneath my cheese board, so that's another idea for you. Okay. 
Okay, let's do a little bit of white in there. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I am just going to take and start moving color around. This is where you guys can do whatever you want. Can see where you might want a little bit more color someplace, or maybe I want to do a little bit of my teal down here, add a little bit more on the black. And this is really just what you guys want, what your colors want. And then what I want to show you, let's see if I can bring this another light over a little bit more. You guys can see those colors a little bit better. Um, what I want to show you is what I do with the now one thing fun thing you can do is you can just pick it up and you can watch those colors all and they're just all starting to drip. And that's when I find that, you know, maybe I've got maybe I want to put a white edge here. There's no wrong or right, right way here, you guys, um, when you're working with epoxy. Sometimes it's fun to bring a little curve down a little bit further. And I haven't started touching my edges yet, but I definitely will. Now keep in mind this area I did down here, I didn't have that other layer of epoxy in there yet. Okay, so I'm going to plug in my heat gun, and so you guys can see what I do with it. So with the heat gun, what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to move around some of this epoxy. And it's fun just to watch it. The other thing the heat gun is doing, and it's probably not able for you guys to see, but it's popping air bubbles. And that's definitely something that you want to make sure you have all your air bubbles out. You see how I can move that, those colors? colors are just moving and I can even move it down a little bit if I wanted. Okay, now one thing I want to do is I want to make sure and I can just use my finger here and I just want to make sure all my edges have epoxy on it. And they definitely don't. Okay, and so just, and so this is where I've got that clear, some of the clear left. I can just go right around the edges there. And you really want to make sure you want it to be finished all the way around. Okay, so I'm just going to put some in and then I'm going to go around with my finger. You guys will notice I've got my workspace covered with butcher paper. Um, a lot of times I'll use a silicone pad, um, but I happen to have a whole bunch of butcher paper on hand. So I decided to do that today. So now I'm just going to go around with my finger. And you can feel, that's what I like about using my finger, you can feel if you've got a part that is not covered. Okay. 
And then you guys, this project is needs to sit overnight. Okay, so we're gonna let this one sit overnight. And then what I'm going to do is um, actually one step before that. In about an hour, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna remove my tape from underneath. Okay, I'm gonna let it finish dripping a little bit so all the dripping gets done. Okay. And then I'm going to remove that tape and then we're going to let this sit um, overnight. And then, let's see if I bring that up, you guys can see those how pretty those colors are. And you can see I still got movement, I'm letting it drip a little bit there. Um, so then I'm going to let it sit overnight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a butcher block um, finish on it um, just with some oil. And you have got a completed, um, you've got a completed cheese board. And I'll tell you guys, think about how swarming presents, um, wedding gifts. You could do a color based on someone's kitchen. Um, I think one thing I want to try, and if I get it to work out, I'll add it in with this, is I was thinking it would be cute to get a, a set of um, knives um, or cheese cheese cutters and um, drip the same color epoxy on them um, just to see what it would turn out with like. So um, so anyway, I'm just gonna let this one drip. I'm gonna come back and remove that tape in about half hour to an hour. And then I will join you back again tomorrow after it has totally dried and we'll add the finish to it and we'll be all done. Okay, so it's the next day and I want to show you what the board looks like. It's totally dry. You guys can see, hope you can see those colors. My light ring is probably showing some glare there. I went ahead and put the knot back on. I wanted to show you the back. There was a little bit of leakage through here. Um, could have put the tape on a little bit, um, um, burnished it a little bit closer, but overall, I've got a beautiful finish all the way around the sides and this colors are just absolutely beautiful. So next thing we want to do is we want to put a cutting board oil on the board. So I want to show you, this is the one that I showed you earlier that I'd already made and I've got one coat of oil on it. So I picked up my cutting board oil um, at Home Depot. And again, we talked about the epoxy or the resin being FDA approved. This is um, approved for use with food. So very important that you look at your cutting board oil. You would hope that it would always be good for food, but this one definitely does say food grade mineral oil. Okay, so it's mineral oil what we're going to be adding. So the directions here say to apply with a clean cloth, apply it in the direction of the wood grain, um, let it soak in for 20 minutes and then wipe off the excess. Now this is key. To season a new cutting surface, you want to apply three to four coats. Okay, so just good thing to keep in mind. So this one right here just has one coat. So I'm just going to walk you through putting a coat on our new board. And so I just have lots of scraps of material or, um, you know, you can just use a rag. Put it on a clean rag and then as the directions say, wipe it in the direction of the, um, the grain of the wood. Now if you wipe up onto the epoxy, that is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I'm just adding that all the way over and then I'm going to let that sit for 20 seconds. And then I'll repeat the process three or four times. And I think what I'm going to do for you guys is the next time you see this board, I am going to have it filled with meat and cheese to show you the practical use of the board. So I sure hope you like this project. I know I am so excited to make a whole bunch more of these all different colors. So Please give it a, th a thumbs up if you like this project. If you'd like other projects like this, let me know. Or if there's something else you'd like me to try out. So custom cutting board with an epoxy finish. I really hope you guys like this project.
And here is our finished project. Enjoying it out on the patio tonight with a meat and cheese tray and a nice glass of wine. So thanks so much for joining me for another Inspiration Friday project. Make sure you check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com for more inspirational type videos. And please give this a thumbs up if you like this video.